In your Read Write Count Primary 2 bag, you'll find a copy of The Bug Collector by Alex G. Griffiths. George is on the front of the cover, chasing some bugs with his net in the night sky. Also in your bag, you'll find a parent guide with lots of handy tips of activities you can do at home on the book. We hope that you enjoy this reading of The Bug Collector. This is The Bug Collector by oh. Alex G. Griffiths. Today was George's favourite day of the whole week. It was Sunday and that meant he was going on an adventure with Grandad. This particular Sunday, Grandad took George to the Museum of Wildlife. Inside they saw ferocious dinosaurs, wondrous whales, massive mammoths and even stranger creatures of every colour and shape. So cool! Chop chop Georgie! But Grandad didn't stop to look at any of it. He was too excited about something completely different. Insect world. The creatures he wanted to show George were much smaller and stranger and Grandad loved them. On the journey home, George could think of nothing else but the marvellous bugs he'd seen that day. That night, George's dreams were filled with buzzing bees, floating butterflies and sliding snails. When he woke up, George couldn't wait to get outside. So excited! He packed his rucksack and headed out to see what he could find. In the garden, he noticed bugs everywhere. Something fluttered past George's face. He tried to catch it, Oof! but it was too quick for him. Catching bugs was not as easy as George had thought. Whoa, they were so clever. They always seemed to know what he was going to do. George had to learn to be even more cunning to outwit them. Soon, he was a master bug catcher. Carefully. With his rucksack and cart full up, George set off for his treehouse. After he'd found a place for every bottle and jar, George admired his collection. Examining them closely, he saw so many different shapes and colours. As George went home for dinner, everything seemed silent and still. Nothing buzzed, fluttered or scuttled. It's so quiet. The next day, he went back to the garden to continue the hunt, but everywhere was dull and sad. Grandad was also wondering what was going on. He knew something didn't seem right. Suddenly, Grandad realised all the bugs had gone. Back at the treehouse, George looked at his collection. The bugs didn't look happy. Grandad wasn't happy either when he saw what George had been doing. He loved bugs as much as George, but knew that living ones shouldn't be kept in jars and bottles. Grandad explained to George the important jobs bugs have in the outside world, especially in our gardens. Bees help to make lots of new flowers by carrying pollen from one to another. Ladybirds also help plants by eating up to 500 aphids a day. Ants are natural farmers, carrying seeds and planting them in new places. Dung beetles turned waste into food. And of course, all insects are an important part of the natural food chain. If we take them away, lots of animals won't get their dinner. George listened carefully. He knew what he had to do. He opened the jars, the bottles, the windows and doors, and the bugs flew out. The sky was alive again. George was sad to see them go, but Grandad was smiling. He had an idea. It took a little while, but together they changed the garden into a bug sanctuary to share with everyone. George's great big bug world. Grandad and George agreed that watching bugs in their natural habitat was the very best thing in the world. The end. <laughs>